Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Professor Rhett Smith for ProtonGuru.com and we're going to talk about material in Lesson 6.2 in our discussion of carbonyls. And what I want to do here is review all of the ways to make carbonyls that we discussed in previous lessons in the text. One way that you can make carbonyls, the C double bond O, is by oxidizing an alcohol. The alcohol oxidation reactions are discussed in Lesson 2.13 of the Organic Chemistry Primer on ProtonGuru.com for free. And here I just sort of review these things. If I have a secondary alcohol, I can oxidize this carbon, the carbonyl, which is the name for the carbon with the alcohol on it, by taking the hydrogen away. I'll have to take a hydrogen off the O as well, and I will get the ketone in that way. So this is a way to make a ketone. Now there's a couple of abbreviations here. PCC is pyridinium chlorochromate. PDC, pyridinium dichromate. TFAA, one of the reagents used in the Swern oxidation, is trifluoroacetic anhydride. All right, it's condensed formulas listed out here. So secondary alcohols are oxidized to ketones by all of these reagents. A difference comes when you take a primary alcohol, shown here and here, because there are weaker oxidizing conditions and there are more strongly oxidizing conditions. The more weakly oxidizing conditions include the PCC, the PDC, manganese dioxide, and the Swern oxidation conditions. These are weaker oxidizing agents. You'll see there are two H's on the carbonyl carbon. Now, hypothetically, you could take both of those off in an oxidation reaction. The more weakly oxidizing conditions only take off one of those two. If I redraw that structure with the H missing, you can see that we can only make one new bond to oxygen without violating the carbon octet rule. So when you take a primary alcohol with one of these more weakly oxidizing conditions, you're only able to make an aldehyde. All right, so we saw a way to make ketones we see a way to make aldehydes. These more strongly oxidizing conditions, for example, acid with chromate, a Jones oxidation, a potassium permanganate, or a dichromate, these are more strongly oxidizing conditions. You will then be able to take both the H's off of the carbon. That will leave you with this carbon that needs two new bonds. Take the H off the O as well. You need two bonds, you make the first to the O, and what you'll see is all these reagents have an oxygen that they will bring to the reaction as well. We do talk about these mechanisms in some other parts of the course site, but here we're just reviewing this. And this is a way to make a carboxylic acid. In section four of the text, we talked about aromatic chemistry and some special reactivity of benzylic sites. It is these specific types of carbons, these benzylic or allylic positions, that have some special reactivity. The benzylic site has the special reactivity that even if it's not a carbonyl carbon, as long as there are H's on that site, in this case three H's, you will oxidize that benzylic carbon all the way to the carboxylic acid. So here I'm abbreviating the benzene ring as phenyl, pH. That carbon that's benzylic is oxidized all the way to the carboxylic acid. So that's another way to make carboxylic acid, even if there's not an alcohol attached to that carbon in the first place. If you don't remember how these reactions work, you may want to go back and look at lessons 2.13 and 4.14, where I specifically discuss these for the first time. If you review back to lesson 3.14, 3.15, we talk about a process called tautomerization and how that process is involved in these reactions of alkynes. Let's say I have an internal alkyne, and I have this oxymercuration reaction. Well, in this reaction, if you go back and review it, what you're trying to do is to add an OH to the more substituted carbon. Well, in this case, if these R and R prime groups are both not hydrogens, then they're equally substituted. You'd expect kind of a mixture of these two. But these are both examples of enols. Enols are compounds where the carbon has a double bond and an OH going to the same carbon. 
That is the type of compound that undergoes tautomerization. You want to go back and review 3.14 if you've forgotten that or need to refresh your memory on what that is. It's the process where you switch the double bond up to the O, and it's not magic. There's an arrow pushing mechanism given in 3.14, but you get ketones this way. Right? This is all about reviewing how to make carbonyls. It's a little easier if you have a terminal alkyne because now when you try to apply a Markovnikov type rule and figure out more substituted versus less substituted, you could very easily say, okay, I'm going to add the OH to the more substituted side and add the H to the less substituted side and get this enol. But again, enols are not stable. You're going to do the tautomerization process and that will move the double bond up to the O and an H will end up over here. Again, you'll get a ketone. In this case, one ketone instead of a mixture of two like you had up here. Now, there are also these hydroboration oxidation conditions. There's some problems with using these small boranes like we talk about in the primer. And often use a bulky borane like 9BBN. Right, the BH3 one could use with alkenes. Typically, they don't use that for alkynes. But this is a non-Markovnikov way to add an OH and an H to an alkene. And likewise, with an alkyne, what you'll end up doing, if you go back and review this, is add the OH to the less substituted side, H to the more substituted side. And because of the mechanism, you'll want to put the OH and the H pointed the same way. But again, you've made an enol. So you're going to do the tautomerization, where you switch the double bond up to the O, like this, and to draw it out a little bit more correctly, a little more nicely, it looks like this, and you see we get an aldehyde if you take a terminal alkyne and react it with the hydroboration oxidation conditions. Again, pretty important reactions to make carbonyls, especially as we think about learning carbonyl reactions and doing multi-step syntheses. So we've seen ways to do oxidation of alcohols to get carbonyl compounds. We can do reactions of alkynes to get carbonyls. In lesson 3.10, we talk about the ozonolysis reaction. The ozonolysis reaction is a way to make aldehydes, ketones, or carboxylic acids from the alkenes. Now, not all textbooks show you both of these workup conditions for the ozonolysis. In the primer lesson, we cover primarily this one. Some of the review videos on Proton Guru show you the other one as well. But when you have reducing workup conditions like this, or often sink with HCl, some acid. You simply cut the alkene in half. So here's one half of the alkene, the other half of the alkene. And there's a pretty complicated mechanism I show you in 3.10, but you get these carbonyls. You see I've made, in this case, a ketone and an aldehyde. Well, what's the difference if my workup step is hydrogen peroxide? Well, that's an oxidizing condition. It actually won't allow aldehydes to remain. You actually if you think about starting to make the aldehyde, what you can do is oxidize the aldehyde proton with the hydrogen peroxide, so it becomes an OH. So in that way, you get a carboxylic acid instead of an aldehyde. And again, just check with your textbook and your professor to see which of these two or both that you need for your class. Those are the primary ways to make carbonyl compounds I want to review, making them from alcohols alkenes and alkynes. And now we can move on to thinking about the reactivity of carbonyls once you have them.